The world loves being on the water for sports, for leisure, and for supporting the world's economy. Critical for protecting our nation's ports and for fueling our passions, let's see how one company is meeting the demands of the boating industry. Let's go with Intrepid Power Boats on the water. This week on Intrepid Power Boats on the Water, we're at the 2016 Kingfish Classic held in Madeira Beach, Florida. Welcome to the 25th Annual Suncoast Kingfish Classic. That's right folks, 25 years strong, we're the longest running Kingfish tournament on the west coast of Florida. 25 years ago, myself, several other uh, charter boat captains, Gene Turner and uh, Larry Hoffman, Terry Farner, got together and said, why don't we do a Kingfish tournament? I had a charter boat that was running out of John's Pass Treasure Island called the Seafood Platter, Captain Shorty Welch. In the middle of August, he brought kingfish in. I said, Shorty, are there kingfish out there? Well, yeah. Well, guess what we did? We started a kingfish tournament. We had it over five days, not knowing that we would catch a lot of fish. That particular tournament, the very first one, 25 years ago to this day, we weighed in 15,000 pounds of kingfish. If you didn't have a 35 pounder, you weren't in the top 20. That's right, and that's how the Kingfish Tournament got started. Our family's been here for 45 years, Rice family here at Johns Pass, and we're glad to have the longest running Kingfish Tournament on the west coast of Florida. Top anglers from all over the country are here to participate in this prestigious tournament. The weather forecast isn't looking very favorable for the anglers. High seas are predicted, so strategy will play a key role in who brings in the big Kingfish today. The most pressure on any fisherman going out for a tournament is they come back with a fish on the boat. And uh, while our original plan, original spot didn't pan out as we had expected, we, were, uh, we had a plan B and that worked out uh, quite well. We got a fish to the scale. And right now what we're competing for is the aggregate to see where we are in the overall competition, not just for the one day. Captain Jim Kelly and Team Fleer are in their 40 Open Intrepid with triple 400R racing Mercury engines. Their strategy is to go to a location several miles offshore that angler Lance Herring has seen produce a lot of huge king mackerel. These 400R Mercuries are more fuel efficient and have allowed the team to fish these outer locations without concern for having enough fuel to get back in under the bridge safely. Yeah, the seas, uh, unfortunately, it just seems to be uh, every time we have a tournament, we have uh, a, sh a front come through in rough weather, but we all know as part of this sport that that's what you get, and we're, our boats and our equipment are ready to uh, put up with the elements. It's just our, you know, our bodies that take a lot of uh, wear and tear, but you know, once you have that fish on, you forget about all that other stuff, and you, the excitement, the adrenaline just surges, and uh, you can think of nothing but getting that fish to the boat and then into the box. One thing with the uh, fall tournament, you can always count on those cold fronts pushing through. We had the first good blow um, Friday and a, a lot of residual waves coming through, so it, was, it made it really tough this morning. Fortunately, it laid down enough where we could get around, and on, on Jim's Intrepid, it is just seamless, you know, so I really think we have an advantage fishing on that boat. Yeah, the forecast was not good. A front just came through uh, uh, yesterday. It was nasty yesterday, and it really didn't lay down today so we ran probably 60 miles uh, with the sea so it wasn't uh, as bad as coming back but still these were six to eight we were running about 40 miles an hour spending a lot of time in the air it was uh, quite a pounding to get out there and we had as I said uh, high expectations for the spot it's done well in the past but uh, today unfortunately I think the sharks and the barracuda won over the kingfish Captain Jim's boat is also equipped to make a ride in rough seas like they're facing today a dry and comfortable trip. Now this, uh, <clears throat> this boat, which is a 40-foot Intrepid, I'll tell you, I've not been out in the last, I don't know, three or four years kingfishing where I felt unsafe. I mean, we've been in seas down in the Keys, uh, upwards to eight to 10 foot. 
uh, not that that's our preference, but regardless of the seas, I always feel very comfortable on the ride out, on the ride back, and I always feel safe that we're gonna get myself, the rest of the crew home uh, in one piece. This show is being brought to you by Ashland, proud manufacturer of AME premium resins and MaxGuard premium gel coats for the world's best boat builders. Seven Marine, the most powerful outboards on the planet. Electronics Unlimited, world innovators in marine electronics. Vetus Maxwell, creator of boat systems. One of the biggest things to hit the water this year is the 7 Marine 627 horsepower engines. These engines are really turning heads with their custom paint schemes and LED lighting. We had a chance to speak with Brian Davis from 7 Marine to hear more about these great engines. So you got an unbelievable display here this year, as usual though, you always do. So what's new? What are you guys doing? Well, there's a lot new going on. Um, the main thing that we've got this year specifically is continuing to improve and refine our product for the big boats. And what we did with the 627, which we launched last year, we've had really good success with it, is we changed the hydrodynamics of the lower unit. It gets the big boats on plane faster and it makes them more responsive to trim. We changed the nose of the lower unit a little bit. We put a bigger ventilation plate on it to help them pop up and go. And we're really seeing it pay dividends. Well, I think you've done that same package on the boat that we just see trial the other day on Mr. Uh, Dunnan's boat, I believe, right? That one I'm pretty excited about because you guys dropped it in the water. It went 80 miles an yeah. hour. Yeah, out of the box. It is, went 80. Which is cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and you know, we got Mr. Aspinwall's boat here too, which yeah. uh, also went 80. Yeah, yeah. So to see the ability to take a lower unit and have it be efficient on a Panacea with triples, yeah. but then be able to run 80 on a 40 open with triples, that's the kind of stuff we were really after. Sure. And so we wanted to be able to, to make it really continue to be efficient through the water so it's the same low diameter that the old lower unit was with a twin pinion, but just a few of the right tweaks to continue to refine this to deliver the best performance for the big boats. Well, it's, it's nice because as you can see, the popularity is growing. I mean, half my boat show booth has got sevens on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> I bet. Um, but you know, the neat thing is I walked down with a customer the other day and he said, you know, I really want something like this, but I'm looking at that and I said, well, here's twins on a 375. Yeah. You know, this boat will run 70, 73, maybe 75 light on a good day. Yeah. I said, and now here's triples on a 40 if you want a little more performance, a little more size. Yeah. And if you want a lot more luxury and you still want reasonable performance, you can go 65, 66 miles an hour with a triple panacea. Yeah. And then walk down, if you want a sport yacht, here's a 475 sport yacht with quads, also a 70 mile an hour boat, but you got room for six people to sleep. So for, that's, really a cool thing to be able to show twins triples quads all in one place yeah uh, you guys always do a really nice job well in the quad 475 that i have here mr hughes boat yeah. he's actually thinking about selling that boat and he's going to want to go from the 557s and have me build him another boat and do the 627s yeah i'm really excited about that what we've been seeing is that our customers once they get to working together with intrepid and seven and buying the seven package they stay with us, yeah. and that's something that we set out to do in the beginning. And uh, we, you know, we want to continue to drive new product features that the customers want to have. Sure. And so when we do that together in the right package, we can keep the customers happy and keep delivering new things to improve the experience, and that's what it's about. Well, I know all our customers with Sevens on them love them. Uh, we, we continue to do more and more of them, and you guys are the, the best vendors we got. So well, it's great. It's a, it's you know, I see partnerships are made best through. Uh, focusing on the customer yeah. and then doing the hard work to make it happen and you guys you guys just consistently do that and uh, you know sometimes you bleed and sweat together yeah. and you yeah. turn that into something that as long as it's focused on the customer yeah. the market really rewards it and we appreciate that working together with you well you guys are doing an awesome job Thank as you. usual Thank have you. a great as show brother Thank appreciate you. You it too. all right the new 627 horsepower 7 Marine engines are allowing boat manufacturers to offer power and performance in today's larger outboard boats. 
the sound of a seven marine engine roaring past you will definitely leave a lasting impression. So check this out. 640 horsepower, supercharged, same motor that they put in the seven marine motors, man, it's amazing. So it's like, when you look at this, it's got the seven marine motor in it. Check this out, carbon, carbon fiber. fiber. <laughs> it's like resin and cloth. Yeah. So here it is, resin and cloth and a seven marine motor. There was like no other car for me to have, right? Just like a boat. So <laughs> I, th I think it's awesome. So let's go for a ride, man. Check let's it go. out. Let's go. Cool. So what's cool is it's just like a boat. You end up taking off, say you're out in the intercoastal waterway and you're just in a no wake zone and you're just cruising along and then as you're get, getting going and you're wanting to get up on plane and then all of a sudden you're out of the no wake zone, you can hit it. It's on touring mode. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's like just one of those things where the, the amount of muscle that it's got, and it's a, a four-door sedan, you know? It's like, it's definitely not your grandpa's caddy. You know? <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, it's awesome. Welcome back to Intrepid Power Boats on the Water. In the Kingfish Classic, there's not a shotgun start. Anglers may choose to launch their boats from multiple locations at safe morning light. Team Old School in their 30-foot cuddy cabin has the advantage of multiple years of experience from local captain Ronnie Keene. This team had a late start getting to the fishing grounds because they had engine trouble. The team's technician, Paul Fleming, was able to diagnose the problem, fix it, and they were able to get to their spot. Yeah, it's pumping out. My role, everybody on the boat has a role. My role is, uh, you know, I'm our, I'm our lead technician, so if anything happens on the boat during the day or, or, or between events, you know, my, my main responsibility is to make, the, make sure that the boat is in tip-top condition and, and make sure that we're ready to fish. Um, I also do a good majority of the gaffing as well as some of the angling on the boat. There's nothing like, there's nothing like gaffing a fish, you know. Everybody says that angling is, is, is the rush, but you know, when you gotta when you gotta reach out on your tippy toes with a 14 foot gaff to get that big pig in the boat, it, it, it gets to be quite a bit of an adrenaline rush. This team has chosen to fish one of the captain's favorite sites in the area and is willing to brave the high seas to get there. The springtime wasn't too bad, but the fall it's been pretty nasty out there consistently, week in and week out. Oh, I completely changed their game plan. See, so um, we'll even plan out so we can run the trough to certain spots to kind of ease the beating down a little bit, or romp the beach, or even stay close to shore. It definitely affects the game plans on the small boats. Well, yeah, we had made a decision because it was a little rough that day and blowing. Um, when we left the pass, it really didn't look that bad until we got about 25, 30 miles offshore. And then, you know, you're kind of committed. So we just slowed the boat down, took our time, and rolled on up. Uh, we had some great shots on fish. Just uh, one of those days when luck's not flowing your way. You know, you can't win them all, but you know, we worked hard and we had a lot of great opportunities that just didn't materialize that day. Yeah, I mean, you know, people lose sight of it. It's called fishing, not catching. So, you know, that's why we try to make a great day out of it. You know, you can't win every tournament, 
nobody out here can. So the, the biggest thing is to have fun, enjoy your, your, your fellow anglers, and uh, the camaraderie is great. The fish were biting for Team Old School, but unfortunately were not the right species. In this game, it's a lot more luck than skill. The group of fishermen we fish with, everybody's about on the same level. I mean, throughout the years, these guys have been fishing, you know, 20, 25 years. You get your skills honed in, so a lot of it is luck, you know, having good karma, which we believe in, you know, getting along and having fun. That's the most important part is uh, we take it real serious, but we want to have fun. So that's what it's all about, having a good day, you know, not yelling and screaming at each other. And it is what it is. Yeah, Morgan does the majority of our angling. Um, he's really great at it. Um, you know, when him and I are, are together and I'm on the gaff and he's on the rod, there's a, a really good communication uh, between us. There's usually very little breakdown. Um, so we're able to actually get that fish in in a, in a good amount of time. Well, I'm not necessarily always the angler. I'm just generally in the back watching the spread. So I'm usually the first one to the rod. Um, sometimes Paul grabs it if he's next to me and, and it goes off over his head or something. But um, I mean, I've been fishing my whole entire life. We've been doing tournaments, my father and I, since I was about four or five years old and been fighting fish pretty much ever since then. So it's kind of just natural. It's my uh, favorite thing in the world to go fishing. That's why I do it for a living. This show has been brought to you by Langer Krell, Florida's longest running marine electronics dealer for over 45 years. Pompanet, defining excellence since 1948. Mercury, go boldly. Bennett Marine, the world leader in trim tab innovation, quality and service. It's time to go on the water with this week's sea trial. Vice President of Sales Christian Gonzalez has this customized cuddy cabin out for a demo to show us some of the capabilities and custom features that Intrepid has put into this boat. It is truly one of a kind, one at a time. Hello everyone, I'm Christian Gonzalez, VP of Sales for Intrepid Southeast. Today we're aboard our 40 cuddy with a couple of new custom options. What are they? Come with me and let's check them out. If you think that's nice, this boat's also equipped with a gyro stabilizer M5C keeper to prevent the boat from rolling port and starboard. If you've ever been diving in rough conditions, the most common complaint amongst divers is gearing up as the boat is pitching port to starboard. Today the seas were pretty calm, so we had to ask our chase boat to turn up the water a little bit to give you a demonstration. We can install these features on almost any one of our models to help make your boating experience more comfortable. Team FLIR was changing locations when they spotted a group of birds feasting on a big bait school and decided to drop their lines in the water in the area. Captain Jim made a good call and Team FLIR is heading to the scales to weigh in a nice kingfish. Yeah, yeah, it was rough conditions. We were able to get a fish on, we were lucky. Um, it was a uh, very challenging day, uh, a lot of weeds, a lot of wind, but it was you know, still a very good day. Uh, a lot of barracuda, a lot of sharks, a lot of amberjack. Sometimes you have to fight through it, you know, when you're in different areas. And uh, yeah, it was tough. All the teams struggled. Um, we've had red tide um, pretty much for the mouth of Tampa Bay South. So it's been very tough to find decent sized bait. You really had to run offshore to get some and 
even out there, it was really, you know, really sparse. So we were lucky to have bait, just enough, and uh, we got a fish. You know, it wasn't a big one, but it was a tough tournament, and you know, you know we did the best we could. We just came in, uh, weighed in another fish, so that's three in a row for us. Uh, it's, we're off to a great season this year. We're in eighth place uh, with a good fish uh, in November. We got a good chance to get into the money, and that's what we're looking forward to, forward to doing. We are very fortunate to be here at the 25th annual Suncoast Kingfish Classic. This is a great event and great tournament, and we are wrapping up Division 6 right now. We are only less than three weeks away from our national championship, which will be held in Fort Pierce, Florida this year. It's going to be a huge event. It's basically our version of the Super Bowl for the Kingfish world. We're going to see boats from North Carolina to Louisiana coming down to Fort Pierce for, to fish for that coveted title of national champion. So you, in order to qualify for nationals, you have to be an SK member, you have to fish two SK sanctioned events, and then you have to fall within the top 25 of your division, which is basically a geographical location. So today is the final event in Division 6, which spans basically from Tampa down to Fort Myers. The Kingfish Classic weigh-in had several teams producing huge Kingfish. There was lots of excitement, and it turned out to be a great tournament. Team Fleer hit the stage and weighed their catch. It wasn't necessarily the size they were hoping for, but any time you're able to put a fish in the boat in adverse weather conditions is a good day on the water. Next week on Intrepid Power Boats on the Water, we're heading back to Madeira Beach for the third leg of the Wild West Kingfish Tournament.